John Dorn from Glidefast Consulting. And today I'm going to show you how you can leverage performance analytics to display net promoter score widgets. This will allow you to trend on your net promoter score. You can dive into breakdowns or second level breakdowns so that you can get a better picture for what's driving that score for your organization. So if you're unfamiliar with what a net promoter score is, it's a metric used in customer surveys which measures customer loyalty. It's generally a pretty simple question. In my example here, I'm saying, how likely is it that you would recommend test company to a friend or colleague? It's generally a zero through 10 scale. That could be zero through five, but in this case, I'm just doing zero through 10. All of my nine or 10 responses are considered promoters. Anything zero through six is considered a detractor and anything seven and eight is considered passive. And the way a net promoter score is calculated is we take the number of nine and tens and we subtract the detractors from the promoters. And then we divide that number by all of the surveys, the number of all of the surveys. So that'll include my passive seven or eights. So in my example, I have five surveys. I have three promoters. So three scores, nine or 10 one detractor so three minus one is two so two divided by five that'll give me 40 percent. so that's a pretty good score net promoter speaking if i look at this graph i just pulled up from google you could have a score anything between negative 100 and positive 100 so anything over zero is considered good once you get to 50 it's excellent and over 75 is considered world class so I'm going to show you how we can use performance analytics to get this score in ServiceNow. And the idea would be once this is set up, it will run daily. So as different customer surveys are coming in, your net promoter score is constantly changing. So you'll be able to see and trend on that changing score. I'm not going to go through creating every breakdown, but you can also create breakdowns, you know, for specific categories or uh, contact types, right? So you might have this survey firing on incidents where maybe one category has a really good net promoter score and another one is struggling. So you'll be able to dive in and check that out, right? So that's one of the, the use cases uh, for doing it this way using performance analytics. You can also go down by assignment group or assigned to as well, depending on how many different users there are. So let's get started. So I'm going to create my indicator source. And the indicator source is basically, I'm just defining my top level data set from where uh, we're gonna pull records in from. Once these indicators are created and tied to a scheduled data collection job, the data collection job will run once for, or query the database once for each indicator source. So you might have seven indicators that use this, but the data collection is only gonna query that database once. In the conditions, there's generally a date related filter. So if I wanted to have this run daily and calculate my changes daily, I'll add that into the filter that you'll see below. So I'm going to use the metric result table and these are my scores. So if I add the condition metric category. this one and created on today. That'll be my source. I'm just going to make sure that I have the right filter here. All right, I think we're good. So I've got my indicator source built out. This will run daily. Uh, you could schedule it monthly um, if you wanted to look at that type of frequency. Bi-weekly, you know, there are all these different options. I'm going to stick to daily for this example. And I'm going to create my indicator now. All right, so I'm going to pull in my indicator source, my unit 
is going to be the pound symbol and the aggregate is going to be count value when nil. I always set to zero most of the time. This just, you know, if there were no surveys created on a certain day, it'll just score that day at zero. It makes the graph look a lot better so you don't have missing data points. Direction, I'm going to leave as none. This just determines what, you know, what those performance analytics uh, widgets look like. So if an increase in score was positive, we would say maximize. However, if an increase was bad, like if this was number of new incidents, we would select minimize. And that way, you know, if my score goes up, uh, it might display in red, for example, or if it goes down, it might display in green. So that's sort of the, the direction fields. But for the number of responses, I'm just gonna select none. Additional comments here, I can add any additional conditions all of my conditions should be in the indicator source for this one, so I can leave this as blank. Publish it on the Analytics Hub. Render continuous lines, I always select this. Just makes the graphs look easier, kind of connects each data point if there is something missing. And that should be it. So I'm gonna save my indicator. And I will move on to my bucket group. So my bucket group is where I'm going to actually separate those numbers into those different categories. So I'll call it MPS category. My buckets are going to be detractors, passives, and promoters. So we said detractors is going to be zero through six. Passives is going to be seven and eight. And promoters is going to be nine and tens. leave that empty. So the way this works is if you have the same number as an end and start, it's going to categorize that record as the one that's starting, right? So this should actually be a seven. So what we're saying is zero through sixes are going to be my detractors. If it's a seven, it's going to be a start, which is a passive. And that's going to include eights. But if it's a nine, it's going to go to a promoter. And anything above a nine will also go to promoter if I leave this empty. All right, so I'll save this. Now that I have my bucket group, I can create a breakdown source. And the facts table is always going to be PA buckets when we're working with bucket groups. The field most of the time is always going to be sysid and my condition will be bucket group is NPS category. If I hit preview, I should see my three, my three buckets. Okay. So that looks good. Now that I have my breakdown source created, I'll create my breakdown. and I'll relate that to the source I just created. And we'll create our mapping. So the table is gonna be metric results. And we'll use the actual value field. All right, so now I'll just assign this to my indicator. And that's that. I'm going to create a scheduled job for the data collection. I created these all of these scores today, so I'm just going to do relative end zero days ago. And we'll run it daily. 
generally, once this is up and running, if you already had scores and you already had surveys being sent out, you would do a historic data poll where you can go back 12 months, six months, however far back you want uh, to start collecting scores. You would run that once on demand, and then you would set this up so that it runs daily, typically in the early hours of the morning, where the relative start is one day ago and the relative end is also one day ago. And that way, each morning, this job runs and collects score from, scores from the previous day. But in this case, since I just created all of these surveys today, I'm just going to set the relative end for zero so I can pull in data. All right, I will execute. And I'm just going to click into my indicator to see if everything looks good. We should see our five scores. And if I break it down by MPS category, we'll see the three promoters, the one detractor and the one passive. All right, so three promoters, one detractor and one passive. So that doesn't really show us much. We don't have the score yet, but we can use these breakdowns to get that score. So I'm gonna create a formula indicator next. And these indicators don't need to be tied to any data collection jobs. Basically, they use an indicator that already has scores and it relates them to a formula where it can just give you what you're looking for in real time. So let's call this one MPS score. We're looking for a percentage this time. Precision, you know, you can show one decimal point, two decimal points, and it will round to that. I'm just gonna leave it at zero. Here, we're gonna maximize the direction. Uh, the higher the score, the better. Previously, it was just a number of responses. So I left that as passive. And my formula, it's very easy. I'm just gonna select MPS results. My breakdown is category and my element is promoter minus. Now here, I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm going to select the detractors. And I'm going to divide it by all of my scores. So it's pretty straightforward. And then to get a nice percentage, I'll just throw a times 100 at the end. Again, I like to select render continuous lines. So I'll save this. Now, once we show an analytic sub, let's see our score. We see our nice 40%. So if I had this job running daily, instead of one data point, you know, you could see a, a line graph, which, you know, will show every score for the given date. I only have one breakdown on that metric uh, or MPS results indicator. And that is for my MPS category bucket but you could always add more breakdowns, right? So you can dot walk from the survey to the task. So you can get, you know, incident fields. You can break this down by category, contact type, all of those types of fields. States, typically this survey only gets sent out when the state's closed, but you know, I think you get the idea. And you could always, once you have multiple breakdowns, there's this collect breakdown matrix button really is kind of redundant when there's one breakdown but what this does is when there are two it allows you to go two layers deep so if i have a 40 percent score looking at the analytics hub here i would be able to look and say all right well, i have a 40 percent score what's my score for hardware incidents i can click into hardware incidents and then i could say what's my score for this 
Uh, so you can go down a couple layers. That's the idea. So I hope this was useful. Again, I'm John Dorn with Glidefast Consulting and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.